Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming video about Electronic Basics. In this episode of Electronic Basics, I, I'm gonna tell you about the most basic elements in uh, electronics, its capacitors and the resistors. Here on the table I have some assortments of uh, capacitors and resistors. Let's sort them out. Capacitors and resistors come in different sizes and colors, and in different shapes and forms. In, in this pile over here we have resistors, and in uh, this one over here uh, all the capacitors. Capacitors can be uh, later separated in three more categories. There is electrolytic ones, which are normally in cylindrical shape. There are ceramic ones, which uh, look like these discs or these small uh, rect rectangles. And then there are uh, film capacitors, which are all these bigger ones. Also, resistors can be separated in multiple categories. Uh, there are uh, variable resistors in form of potentiometers. There are some wire-wound power resistors, which can take high power. Uh, then there are metal film capacitors. And uh, carbon film capacitors. This one is a normal uh, quarter of a watt uh, resistor. And this one is a 2 watt one. Resistors and capacitors come in all different sizes and uh, capacities and resistances. Electrolytic capacitors come in uh, different capacitances and uh, voltages. Electrolytic capacitors are polarized, which means uh, that you have to co uh, connect them in the correct polarity, or otherwise they will explode. And you should not exceed their uh, voltage rating, because uh, otherwise they will explode. There are different capacitors that, that are used for different jobs, like for filtering mains voltages, uh, like for uh, filtering mains voltages, uh, rectifying AC voltage to DC voltage after a bridge rectifier, uh, or in other type of filter circuits. Resistors are used to limit current. Uh, they limit current to some uh, to components. Now let's see how, uh, how both of these uh, components are made or what they are made of. Capacitors and circuits are shown with this symbol. It's basically two plates with uh, leads coming out from each plate. And uh, basically that's all that capacitor is. It's just a, uh, two plates uh, with an insulator in between. And uh, the electrons are stored on these plates. Uh, one is, uh, on one there is uh, stored positive electrons On one there is store positive ions, on the other one negative ones. It's almost the same as a battery, but battery just holds more. Uh, battery, battery just has more capacitance. Capacitors uh, are charged fastly and they can discharge really fast with a, a high uh, amount of current. And uh, cap 
and resistors are basically uh, like a restriction in a circuit. Uh, they are in circuit uh, shown by this symbol and all that resistor is it's a ceramic tube or a, ro a ceramic rod uh, cover covered in either uh, metal plating or in a carbon film in short of carbon film resistors or metal film resistors Resistor can be uh, how resistor works can be easily shown with the water analogy. It basically is if you have a large like water pipe coming in, and if you restrict it to a smaller pipe, it will restrict the water flow, even if this uh, part is really small or really short. Uh, and resistor limits current for uh, circuits. Basically, a resistor limits current in circuits. Well, one example would be to light up an LED. If you would connect a LED directly to a power supply, it would blow up. But if you would uh, connect a LED in parallel, as shown here, uh, resistor in parallel in series with, well, not in parallel, but in, in series with LED. Uh, then it would light up and not blow up. Uh, and to simulate this, uh, here I have uh, two LEDs. One is connected to one lead of a full power, power supply. And if I correct it directly, the LED just blows up. And it doesn't light up anymore. And it's blown. But if I use a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series with this LED, then it will just light up normally, as you'll see in a second. See, this LED is uh, connected in a seri uh, series with this resistor, as you as shown here. This is the uh, symbol for LED, and this one is for the resistor. And as you see, the LED just lights up normally, and it does not blow up. Each resistor has its own power rating, and if you will pass through it more current than it's rated for, the resistor will just burn up, as I will demonstrate. Uh, so the Ohm's law... Uh, Ohm's law basically allows you to calculate uh, current uh, through a, resi a resistive load, or a load, uh, if you know the load's resistance and, uh, and the voltage. Ohm's law is basically, uh, this is the formula for, for Ohm's law. I'm going to draw it in triangle to basically show it. Uh, it's U, which is voltage. Uh, U here up is R, which is resistance. And down here is current, which is I. So U is voltage. R is resistance. And I is current. So uh, to calculate uh, one of these three, you, you need to know uh, other these uh, other two variables. For example, to calculate current through a load, you would use a formula of I equals R over uh, R divided by U and uh, let's say the resistance is 15 ohms and this is the symbol for, uh, for ohms uh, which would be 15 and the voltage 12 volts so it's 15 divided by 12 and that is and the uh, two, uh, 15 ohms we, we divide the 15 ohms by 12 volts and it equals into 1.25 amps and it will be 1.25 amps and if we say uh, this resistor is quarter of a watt 
And to calculate the power, you use the formula, which is voltage, well, power equals voltage times current, uh, which in this case would be, uh, it would, one, uh, no, it's uh, 12 volts uh, times 1.25 amps would equal 12 times 12 which equals oh no, 15 equals uh, to 15 watts so if we would just short out a 15 ohm resistor across a uh, if we would short out 15 ohm uh, quarter watt resistor uh, across a 12 volt supply it would definitely uh, burn up because it's it's much over its uh, current uh, power limit and uh, as I will demonstrate so I'm connecting this 15 ohm quarter watt resistor across my 12 volt power, power supply and as you see it will just burn up right my power supply is turned off let me turn it on and as you see now it starts to smoke because it heats up and now it starts to burn And that's it. it, it's not it, it's no longer conducting any current. So th uh, that's it with the Ohm's law. For the for the capacitors, uh, if you exceed their voltage rating, they will just blow up. And for electrolytic capacitors, you can uh, if you also reverse the voltage, they will also blow up. So, for example, let me take this. Where is it? Uh, let me take this capacitor, which is rated uh, 100 microfarad and 25 volt uh, and let me connect it backwards so it explodes to show that you cannot uh, that you should not connect these components backwards let me connect the positive to negative to connect it to backwards and it will just explode well not explode it will went out its electrolyte and then i will talk about why this happens later so I'm gonna put it down here and I'm gonna tape it to my uh, to the table and now let me leave the room as I turn on my power supply because it, it uh, emits quite a lot of smoke And as you saw, this capacitor just exploded and released its electrolyte. So as you can see here, a new capacitor would have these closed and this capacitor is also quite hot. So you see, it has vented out. I don't know if you can see it. Let me focus down. Well, you can't really see it, but it, it has basically puffed up. I could try another example of a capacitor which will just blow up. Let me get the capa other capacitor. Which will show what happens if you connect capacitor incorrectly into a, in a circuit. And to avoid this, uh, always double check uh, all the connections. Let me tape it down again because it shoots away with quite a 
large force with these capacitors, which don't have the vents on the top of it. And now let me leave the room. And as you saw, this capacitor just exploded. And released its electrolyte right here on the paper. Let me unstick it. And here you go, you can see that it has exploded from the bottom. I will show you in a, a new capacitor. In a second. So here's a new capacitor of the, the same kind. It has nothing and here you can see that the, let me remove it from the power supply leads. Here you can see that it has basically exploded. The bottom has, this bottom plug has come out and it, it uh, released all its electrolyte on here. So this is basically what happens if you uh, connect a capacitor backwards into a circuit, which you shouldn't do because uh, it basically destroys the capacitor and it could destroy other uh, components around it. Capacitors uh, is basically built up like uh, it's it top and uh, for the bigger capacitor has like this cross pattern, as you can see on this large one. Uh, and uh, when you connect it backwards, the electrolyte in it starts boiling and the pressure builds up. So these, uh, this basically splits open and lets out the pressure. So it doesn't like uh, just explode uh, the large capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors uh, fail uh, very often in a switch mode power supplies where they're pulsed at very high frequency, uh, which slowly destroys them. Uh, to fit such a high capacitance uh, into such a small space, uh, they basically have a foil, a metal, a metallic foil, a long piece of metallic, metallic foil, uh, then a uh, separator on top of it, which overlaps it. It's some uh, insulator, some kind of a paper which they later soak in electrolyte. Uh, and there is one con uh, contact of the uh, capacitor, and it's welded to it. And then uh, there is another metal plate over it, over uh, this uh, insulator. And there is the other contact of the capacitor. Uh, and, and then it's rolled up in, into the uh, shape of the capacitor. Uh, and I will uh, show how it's inside of a capacitor. I'm gonna take a take apart a capacitor. It's gonna be easier seen with this large one. So well, let me just take it apart. I'm using some snips to basically uh, tear apart this aluminum housing. Here you can see the uh, rubber plug, which is in the bottom of it. So as you see, uh, it, it's basically a roll of uh, paper or some some material which ab absorbs the electrolyte uh, wound uh, around and then this coil is put on. These capacitors contain electrolyte which you should not handle with your hands, uh, which you should not get on your hands, but I will wash my hands after this. So this is like with some tape connected together, so let me untape it. Why is it so hard? Oh, maybe here. Okay, here is the end. Found it. 
So here is some tape, which is a uh, tape to hold together. And here are the here is the insulation layer, and here are the uh, two plastic layers. See, uh, this is the roll, which is quite long. And it again wound itself up. So let me just show you. This one probably should have shown some smaller capacitor, which doesn't have such long roll. But here you can see the uh, first layer of uh, metal insulated by this paper or some kind of a material which looks like paper. And oh, this is actually the both layers of uh, foil. See, these are. It's all it's one. Where's the other layer? Oh, wait, this is only one layer, it seems. Yeah, here is the other one. So this is this uh, this is this layer, and inside here there is an, another uh, met metal layer, which is separated from both sides with a with a insulator. So here are the two insulator plates. This is the inner thinner metal plate and this is the outer thicker metal plate. So that's what's basically inside of a capacitor. And uh, these ones are soaked in electrolytes, so I probably should not be really touching touching them, but anyways. So uh, when you apply the correct voltage, uh, the uh, electrons and, and protons uh, store on, on these plates uh, because they have really uh, large surface area, uh, you can store a lot of them, so the cap capacitance is quite high. And But uh, when you connect it backwards, it disrupts the flow and it heats up, uh, va vaporizing this electrolyte, which uh, build, uh, which uh, turns into steam, and the pressure inside of it builds up. And here you can see the leads, which are uh, spot welded to these ones. And on this one as well, there is a. Uh, let me unravel it. Here you go. There is a lead, which is basically spot welded to it, to these metal plates, which is basically metal foil. Uh, resistors are not so easy to disassemble of uh, normal resistors. And now let me go to the uh, variable resistors called potentiometers. Let me. So potentiometers are basically variable resistors. It it, it has a uh, here here is one. It's like this, and it has it basically has a uh, this small PCB board which has a uh, large round piece, and uh, here you have the contacts for it. There is one uh, one two and three. These are, and then there's a uh, carbon. Uh, it, it, there's a painted carbon track. Uh, on the outside of this, which is uh, its th thickness depends on the uh, resistance of the potentiometer, and, and this is full uh, carbon track. And then there's this middle electrode. Uh, it's a metal electrode which slides along this carbon track, and uh, that's how it changes the resistance. Let me take apart this potentiometer to show you. They have like four uh, tabs uh, here, which uh, if you remove them, it allows you to take it apart. So let me just do that real quick. And here you go. Uh, this is the back casing. And let me remove this so you can see the carbon track. Here we are. So uh, this is the wiper contact, which is connected to the middle connect uh, middle connection. And uh, these small brushes wipe against this uh, carbon track over here. So this is the middle contact which connects to the middle uh, connection and then the uh, it wipes uh, around this outer carbon connection, which is basically just the same uh, as I drew here. Let me show you closer. So it's basically a carbon track with connection connections. That's basically what's inside a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor. 
So uh, that's it for this episode of Electronic Basics. Uh, next one will be about sem semiconductors. Uh, and probably in the next video will be about uh, the second episode of the uh, Tesla coil, of me building my own Tesla coil. So thank you for watching, like, share and subscribe and see you next time.